there's certain truths that I want to talk to you about this morning, which is very important for the body to understand. I've, um, uh, I've found that there's people that believe that Jesus was just a normal, normal human baby when he was born. He wasn't God. He only became the anointed of God the day that he was baptized. So I want to give you scripture. Actually, a guy asked me a question. A very good friend of mine. I've got huge respect for this guy. A massive uh, role that he played in my life. And, and, and he's one of the guys that believe this now. And, um, uh, but I want us to just this morning think about just, just use your brains. And let's just let scripture speak for itself. Amen? Because if there's, there's these questions asked, and I want to share it with you so that if you hear it somewhere along the line that you know um, that's the, that, is the, that is the foundation from where these doctrines are, are, are coming from. As one is that if, if Jesus was God, then a, a human being gave birth to God. And they believe it's impossible for a human being to give birth to God. That's why they believe Jesus was just a normal person. A second thing that has been said is that if Jesus was God, when God is spirit, inside a physical body, why did he need the Holy Spirit to come upon him uh, the day that he was baptized? It doesn't make sense. So it's, it's valid questions. And the third thing that is stated, that if Jesus was God, then we could not relate to him. We could never do what he did, because he is, I mean, obviously God. Now, I mean, if you know that nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Do you really believe that? Yes. Do you really believe that nothing is impossible for God? Yes. Do you believe that if we say that nothing is impossible for God, that it's even possible for God to be incarnated in the body of a little baby? Yes. If you can't do that, then something is impossible for God. Yes. He's the master of the universe. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And it's possible for him to enter into our realm through the body of a, in, inside a little boy mm-hmm. called Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. And this guy, they, one of the things they say, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But they do not believe that Jesus is God the Son. Think about this. How many sons of God is represented under this roof? Say amen this morning. Amen. amen. So they say Jesus is the Son of God just like one of us. But He's not God the Son. Now I just want to take care of the scripture and just share something with you this morning for a couple of minutes before we're going to eat pop and mushroom sauce and braai. Are you fine with that? Amen. We're ready to dig into the scripture. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. How many of you know that when Jesus was born, Matthew was not yet written? Mm. Yeah. Alright, so they only had the old documents that, that came from what was said before. These guys wrote it down in the Hebrew language. The, the law of Moses and the prophets. It's the only stuff they had available. They didn't have a New Testament. So Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they, before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Who gave her that baby? Who? Okay, let's continue. We all the virgin shall be with child. Let me explain to you what happened. The angel came to her and he said that she's gonna have a child and she should call him Jesus. Alright, and she and she she was blown away because um, she's never been intimate with Joseph physically. And um, secondly, since so she's a virgin, says so it's impossible for her to have a baby. And the angel, and you know what's beautiful about the angel? It was it was who was who, who was the messenger? Gabriel. Okay. Yeah. I think it was impressive. I haven't, I haven't met Gabriel physically. I mean, he never, he never appeared to me, but he's, um, he's, uh, he's mastered it. Jesus. But it's all right. Um, but um, uh, then he came to him, he said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. And he's, he's, he's pointing out Isaiah 7 14. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is. Is that God with us or just a normal being with us? God. All right. Now listen, this, this, this scripture did not exist when, he, that, when Gabriel shared this with Mary. This wasn't written yet. It's actually, visualize yourself, Mary is there. Gabriel appears to her and says, um, 
who found favor in the in the sight of God. You will be with child, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be Emmanuel with us. And if you go to Isaiah 740, then we just read that in the original text. The only thing that the Israelites had as a reference. Isaiah 7 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall and his and, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is God, God with us. Yeah. Okay, now if if Jesus isn't God, then somebody missed something somewhere along the line in the prophecy originally that God would be with us in this virgin birth. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 1. Now, I actually wanted to read through the entire Luke chapter 1, but let's not do that for the sake of time. Otherwise, we still need to pray. But I've highlighted a couple of verses that's important. There was a day of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah. I must say priest. priest. What did the priest, priests do? Come on. If he was a priest, what, did, what was his job? Priest. He served in the temple. Okay, so he served in the temple. That was his job. Jesus' dad was a carpenter. What did he do? Woodwork. Okay, he didn't serve in the temple. He didn't qualify to serve in the temple. But Zechariah qualified that he was a priest. So he was acknowledged as one of the spiritual leaders of, of his time. So he, um, of the course of uh, Abia, and his wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. All right. So he was a priest. I'm gonna say priest. Priest. And his wife was Elizabeth. Okay. While she was going there, who was baptized with the Holy Spirit before the outpouring of the Holy Ghost? John. John the Baptist. Think about this, church. All right. Think about this. And they were both righteous before God. How's that? They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments of the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. They upheld the law. Yes, <laughs> so we can understand if God would choose them for Jesus to be born now. Yeah. Because they were righteous, but He didn't. He actually just chose them to be uh, um, uh, give birth to Jesus. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were well stricken in years. Okay, verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed his priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. That was his task for that specific day. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. So they were praying on the outside, the people, while he was, while he entered into the into the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was, and he burnt incense um, uh, as part of his priestly office. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. I think it will happen with most people today. Yeah. We just preach grace and fear fall on me. <laughs> but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Now this is weird. Because in the, in, in, in the culture, in the Jewish culture, you would not call somebody a name that isn't linked to your family line. Remember this. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, which is a wise thing to do. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. <laughs> now, how do you guess that's supposed to happen? I mean, he wasn't in the upper room, waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So this Gabriel standing at this guy inside the temple, Say, you have a son, and in his mom's womb, he will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the the salutation, maybe the salutation, Mary, Mary fell pregnant with Jesus. Elizabeth was already pregnant six months further down the line than she was, and then Mary went to Elizabeth's house to greet her. And when she walked into the house and she greeted, that's the word sanitation, when she greet, greeted Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. 
and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Man, now Elizabeth, Elizabeth, full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. So listen to this, church. John the Baptist, when Mary came into the presence of Elizabeth with Jesus in her womb, John was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I dare a normal boy to do that. If he was just a normal boy like you and me, how in the world would John and Elizabeth be baptized in the Holy Ghost? The Bible says she started prophesying Elizabeth when it happened to her. Yeah. <laughs> because of a, a baby in the womb of a mother. Mm. Now it's time to give birth to this child. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. 59. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. Are you seeing sex blacks in with me? <laughs> and they called him Zachariah after the name of his father. Now stop it all quickly. What happened when John was in the temple? Uh, uh, Zachariah, when he was in the temple and, and Gabriel gave him the message concerning his wife and her fall pregnant, he didn't believe it. And to say, stop my son, he couldn't talk. He lost his ability to communicate with people. He was, he, he was done. So when he walked out, he couldn't communicate. Is that what they call it in the house? Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't dumb like a dog. No, he couldn't speak. <laughs> when, he, when he, he was mute. Thank you for the analysis on the house. He was mute. So when he walked out, he tried to call signs, but I mean, it wasn't his language. Nobody understood him. So the Bible says he hid himself for the duration of her pregnancy because he couldn't communicate with the people. Now it's time to give uh, the baby is born. The family comes, they call him off his father, call him Zachariah. She said, the woman said, no, we call him John. You. In the culture, she didn't have the right to call him a name. It was the father's right to call his son a name. So she said, no, call him John. Yeah. Verse 61. And they said unto her, there is none in thy kindred that is called by this name. None, nobody in your family line before you is called John. 62. And they made signs to his father how he would have called him. Let's read this. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. So he's writing this. J-O-H-N. John. Guess what happened? His mouth opened and he could speak. But that's not the only thing that happened. Listen. And his mouth was opened immediately. And his tongue was loosed. And he spake and praised God. 65. And fear came on all that dwelt around about him. And all these sayings were noised, brought throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was on him. Now this is just something that was added into the, that happening. And his father Zechariah was full to the Holy Ghost and prophesied. Hey? Before Jesus was born. So let's just quickly recap on just the verses that we read. I'm, going to, I'm not going to share a lot today. When Jesus, when the Holy Spirit came on Mary, and, and Jesus started growing within her womb, the moment when she came to Elizabeth, who was further, um, what's the English? Gevorderd in haar swangerskap. Six months. John the Baptist, Elizabeth, both, were filled with the Holy Ghost. So this, this proves something to me. That it wasn't, Jesus didn't receive the Holy Ghost when he was baptized. He was already full of it inside of Mary's womb. So full of it that a fetus had the ability when somebody would come into its presence, they would be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now when we talk about the incarnation, God living inside of us, Christ that is inside us. Christ is the Greek word for the word anointed one and his anointing. The anointing that lives inside us. I want to ask you this question this morning. How is it possible that we as a body underestimate the power of the one that lives inside of us? Yes. If, in, if, if while he was yet a fetus, people would be baptized in the Holy Ghost. In his presence. And not everybody was baptized. John specifically. Why? Because he was the one that had to pave 
the way for Jesus. Now, why did the Holy Ghost come on him when he was when he was 30 years old and he was baptized? Why was it necessary for the Holy Ghost to come on him? And when I was talk, talking to Ken about this and just sharing a couple of thoughts, and Ken highlighted this to me, and, and, and this is the truth about this. And I went back to the scripture and I read this. It doesn't say when the Holy Spirit came like a dove. It doesn't say, and Jesus was full to the Holy Ghost. He was already full to the Holy Ghost. When you read the verses of Scripture and you come to John, Elizabeth, and Zechariah, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost only came on Jesus as a sign to John. That was 30 years and 6 months older than Jesus at that stage. He was 30 years old, 6 months older than Jesus. Jesus was born 6 months after he was born. And when he said, Behold the Lamb of God, he also prophesied and he also made known what was written in the scriptures the scripture said of the one that who you will see my spirit descending I mean Gabriel said that to Elizabeth of the one who you, who he will send the spirit descending he will know he is the one John said that in, in, in his gospels yeah. in the books that he wrote he said I saw him Jesus and I remember seeing the Holy Spirit came down like a dove on him. I knew he was the one. Now, just in case we don't know what that one was, go back to the original scripture. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, let me close with this. Why was it possible? Why was it necessary for Jesus to be born into a physical body? I touched on that last week. I just want to quickly share this with you. When God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, and let them have dominion, God spoke, God spoke, God gave the authority of dominion to the human race. Are you with me? Amen. I mean, it's simple. If God didn't say, let us have dominion, God said, let them have dominion. So I used the example last week, if this building represents the earth, and Adam's domain was inside this building. Anything outside of this building, God had authority and power over. Amen? Amen. But God gave exclusive right and authority to Adam within the building called this earth. So God couldn't make the decisions on their behalf. God could lay down the ground work, say, if you eat of this, you will die. If you don't, you won't die. Inside that garden was the tree of life. Who is the tree of life? Jesus, Jesus is the tree of life. Is, who is the tree of life? Everybody say it. Jesus. Jesus. If Jesus is not the tree of life, people, then, it doesn't, then, then the whole scripture doesn't make sense. He's the tree of life. And he was in the middle of the garden. Jesus has always been the center of God's entire plan. Yeah. But he gave the authority to Adam. Not even to the tree of life and to Adam. He said, Adam, man will have the dominion. So when man sold the dominion to the devil, the only way God legally had authority in this building is he had to enter it in flesh. And that's when the music starts playing. It's beautiful. The timing is perfect. He's, Jesus had to enter in the flesh in order for man to understand him, who he was and what his plan was. So he could legally claim the authority in this company, claim it back. From who? From the defeated one, yeah. And it's Luke 4, now. Nah. When Jesus was tempted by the defeated one. And he said, if you fall down and you worship me, I will give you these kingdoms and all their authority. So Jesus... In the beginning of his ministry, when he was baptized and he, uh, in water, he went into the wilderness to be tempted. Then the devil came and said, if you fall down and you worship me, I will give you all these verses. You know, some time ago, I saw an article of a man, a Christian filmmaker. And he just did a small clip on Facebook. I don't know if it was a Facebook Live or something. And he said, you know what is alarming about the body of Jesus Christ? He said he, he tested this. He quoted that specific verse out of Luke on his Facebook page. Now he's got a heck of a lot of followers. 
And that verse just says the following. If you fall down and worship me, I will give you all these kingdoms and the authority. And he said he couldn't believe how many Christians said amen on that post. And it was the devil talking. It was the devil talking in your Bible. If you fall down and worship me, I will give you this. Isn't that exactly the same thing he's saying to the church today? Yeah. If you fall down and you worship, we think, we think it's God talking to us. If you worship me, I will give you this. As if God needs our worship. He already gave us everything in Christ. Glory. Amen. 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 So the reason why Jesus had to enter into a human body makes 100% sense. One, God wanted to give the human race a face that represented the Godhead, Jesus Christ. That's so why you could boldly say, if you, if you saw me, <coughs> you saw the Father. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I read this to you last week where they wanted to, to kill him because he called himself the Son of God. And in their understanding, they said, he made himself equal with God. Yeah. Yeah. So I said to this friend of mine that believes this funny thing now, I said to him, there will be two things happening in eternity one day. Maybe I will stand in front of him and say, I am so sorry I told them that you were God. Or you will stand in front of him and say, I'm sorry I told them you were not God. I would rather lift him up and place him on the highest spot in my life and not try to bring him down to my level so that I can match up to him. He took me to his level so that I could match up to him. Amen. I'm seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. So the reincarnation is more than just Jesus entering the body of a human being. The reincarnation is the end result where Christ lives inside of us in the now already. Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost who lives inside of you? And in the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. He will quicken your mortal body. You know what? We believe, and we believe a lot of funny things. But if Jesus was just a normal human being, I see to this guy, if he was just a normal human being, then it means pity could have died for the sins of the world. Yeah. Exactly. Of Yanni. Yeah. Or give him a fancy name. What cowboy name is fancy? Tashoi. <laughs> Cowboy name. White Eagle. White Eagle. Anybody could have died for the sins of the world if it was just a normal man full of the Holy Ghost. If it was just a normal man that became the first Christ when he received the Holy Ghost, I've got sad news for you. Zachariah was then full of the Holy Ghost before he was. Yeah. So was Elizabeth. And so was John in his mother's womb. Yeah. And when they spoke to Jesus, he said, out of all the men or anybody ever born out of a woman, nobody was greater than John the Baptist. Right. Nobody. He said that. And John the Baptist had, was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Before the outpouring in, in the book of Acts chapter 2, he was full of the Holy Ghost. He said, nobody's greater than John the Baptist. And then he said, but the least. The least yeah. in the kingdom. How often have you felt like the least? Mm. Hmm? How often have you felt like the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist? Yeah. You see, so our identity you will only understand your identity if you understand the incarnation. If you understand what really happened, that if, if it was possible for God to enter into this building called earth, that he could have legal right. And guess what? I've said this before, I've said it three or four times. They could not kill him. They couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. We can kill a human being in this week past a friend of ours. His daughter of 21, 22 lost the battle with cancer. You can kill a body. Death can still take the life out of these bones. But nobody could kill Jesus. Yeah. Nobody. You know why? Because he wasn't a human being. He was 100% human being, 100% God. You know what's the amazing thing about him? They couldn't kill him. He said, I will lay my life down yeah. Yeah. and I will pick it up again. Yeah.